A few days ago, I posted a video about the brand new CB radio rules for 2025, and that video went absolutely crazy. Thousands of you watched it, and in the comments, one thing stood out. A lot of people don't use CB every day, or they've got one laying around, and they just don't know how to get started. So in this video, I'm going back to basics. If you're brand new to CB, or if you've only ever used it casually, I'm going to give you the crash course. What CB is, the difference between HF and UHF, how far you can actually talk, the rules you need to know, and even how to use repeaters properly. By the end, you'll know exactly how to use a CB radio in Australia without breaking any rules, and you'll probably learn a few tricks that you didn't know before. So what is CB radio? Well, CB stands for Citizen Band. It's a public two-way radio service designed for everybody to use for the public. You don't need to apply for your own license, you're covered by what's called a class license. Now, this confused a few people in my previous video, and I'll explain what this means soon. It is used by four-wheel drivers, it's used by caravanners, truck drivers, road workers, all sorts of things. You could use it to communicate with your family and friends when you're on uh, vacation or if you're on trips. Uh, so there's all sorts of different things that you could use it for. Now, it's regulated by the Australian Communications and Media Authority, and there are frequencies and power limits to adhere to. So let's just clear up the misconception around the licensing requirements. So all around Australia, there are different radio communication services, and they all require licensing. So for instance, here's a couple that I've got on the screen. We've got amateur radio where each operator is tested, does an exam and applies for a license when they pass. In a company license, so if we're thinking about businesses, commercial businesses or emergency services, their license covers all of their employees or volunteers of their organization. Similarly, with the CB radio class license, that license is the license. It, it has a bunch of rules uh, that must be followed, but you don't need to individually apply for a license. You can just buy the equipment and operate and you're good to go as long as you follow the rules that are listed. So some people say that CB is license free. It technically isn't. The class license is the license. It's just you don't need to put in any paperwork and you're just legally again bound by its conditions. Now, there are two CB bands or ranges of frequencies that are available in Australia for use. The first one is HFCB or 27 megahertz, also known as 11 meters. This is 40 channels from 26.965 to 27.405 megahertz. There are a couple of modes that you can operate, AM, which is amplitude modulation, SSB, single sideband, and also now in 2025, FM. So HF, uh, there are some pros and cons of HFCB. That is, HF can be noisy. It's capable, though, of working seriously long distance. So under the right conditions, you can work uh, stations or other radio stations all across Australia, New Zealand, potentially even the world as well. So people have worked interstate overseas, uh, but even for local chats though, you'll need a big antenna and you still need to deal with background noise. But it is popular with hobbyists and those in remote and rural Australia especially. The other CB radio band is UHF. This is on 477 megahertz, quite a lot higher than HFCB. Now, there are 80 channels in the UHF CB radio band. These are available nationwide. And this is what most people use in their four wheel drives, their caravans, or on the road. Now, the pros of this is that you get nice, clear local coverage. You can have portable handhelds. You can have vehicle-mounted radios. You could have base station radios as well. You can also have repeaters as well, which listen to your signal and repeat it out from mountaintops to extend your coverage. But there are some cons to this. Due to UHF, it's limited to line of sight. It can be blocked by hills and also dense forest as well. But it is the most common band in Australia. It is used quite heavily, and it's great for coordinating groups, for traveling, for car-to-car -car communication if you're around driving with your friends on a road trip or something and you've got that short distance between cars. It's very good for that. So a quick comparison now between the two, 27 megahertz, again, you can use it for long distance communication. 
Uh, but you require the large antennas and you'll have some background noise problems as well. It's more suited for the rural or the hobbyists um, in us. UHF, short, very clear signals, great for vehicles, caravans, uh, repeaters can extend that coverage quite a long way. And this is what most people use. Now, on both HF and UHF, there are emergency channels. These are channels on HF9 and on UHF CB channel 5 and 35. So these three channels are reserved for emergencies and they're locked in as emergency only channels in the license. So this is one of those rules that you need to apply by. You can't just operate on these channels. They're for emergency only. They're also used for coordination and training for emergencies as well under the new 2025 rules. But there is an important bit here that we need to also clarify is emergency channels are not monitored by emergency authorities. So there's no one in a control room listening to these channels. They only work if someone else is listening and the point is to always call triple zero if you can. These channels are used as a last resort for areas that don't have phone coverage. And there are quite a few instances where the emergency channels have come in handy when those that don't have phone coverage get into trouble. Now, this is something that always stumps a lot of people is what equipment can I use? What is legal and what is illegal? So in Australia, there are a lot of pre-approved radios. These are known as type approved CB radios that can operate legally in Australia. So these are mainly radios from brands that you would think of such as ICOM, GME, Uniden, Oricom, those kind of brands. If you see those, those CBs, they're fine. They're good to go. They're safe and they're legal to operate. What's not legal though are radios such as the Baofeng UV5R or Chinese radios. Um, any ham radios or any modified gear at all. These are amateur radios. The Baofeng radios are amateur radios. They're not CBs. They can transmit outside the CB band. So there is potential for them to cause interference and you can get fined if you are found using them on CB frequencies. They are only supposed to be used on ham radio frequencies. So uh, the simple rule of thumb is that if you wanna use a CB, buy a radio that is sold as a CB in Australia. So just how far can you talk on CB radio? Well, on HF, local comms, they might be 10 to 20 kilometers vehicle to vehicle. This can stretch though to hundreds and even thousands of kilometers under the right conditions. Now, these conditions generally happen around about late spring, mid to late spring through summer. These, This is the peak time where the right conditions can happen. And you can talk worldwide sometimes on uh, HFCB. So again, good for hobbyists, those who want to talk for long distance. Now, it's not really reliable for day-to-day -day short distance but it can work a lot better in the scrub and also mountainous terrain than UHF CB. Now, UHF CB, handheld to handheld, usually about one to five kilometers, depending on the terrain and the power level that you choose in a radio. Most radios come with about one or two watts, the smaller units. The bigger units, five watts, which is the maximum power that you can run on UHF CB, they can talk a little bit further. So again, it's all a bit variable depending on terrain mainly. Vehicles with roof antennas, they can be a little bit further, five to 20 kilometers typically. And if there's a repeater, then you can get 50, 80, hundreds of kilometers depending on where that repeater is actually located. Now, there are some do's and don'ts and etiquette when it comes to CB radio. Some people think that it is the Wild West, and it is the case in some areas. CB can get quite interesting to listen to, but it's good to follow some quick rules and some quick etiquette. So the first one is do keep the emergency channels clear. That is the main one. Be clear when you call and also identify yourself uh, to others, especially on emergency channels if you are in trouble. Don't abuse people. The old CB behavior rule is gone now, but harassment is a police matter. So if you do abuse others and you do harass others on the radio, then you may be liable to be charged by police under those rules. Don't assume that CB is private. It is completely open. All channels are public and can be heard by anybody. 
Now, one thing that I just wanted to point out here too is that some uh, manufacturers may potentially say that radios have privacy to uh, privacy tones or privacy modes such as CT, CSS tones, all this sort of jargon. And these just essentially block what you hear. Everyone else can hear what you're saying. So don't assume that these are encrypted or that other people can't hear you because they can. So the rule of thumb here is don't share anything on the air that you wouldn't otherwise want the public to know. So let's talk about repeaters. This confuses a lot of beginners. The basics of it is that a repeater listens on one channel and it rebroadcasts on another channel, usually from a hilltop. And this is how you can get greater range. So on UHF-CB, the repeater output frequencies, these are channels 1 to 8 and 41 to 48. This is what you listen to on your radio. The inputs are on channel 31 to 38 and 71 to 78. But these are not for direct use. So don't dial up on these uh, channels unless you are actually intending to operate through a repeater. Uh, now, here's the trick. This is how you actually do the repeater operation. You select the repeater output channel, so either 1 to 8 or 41 to 48, and you switch your radio to duplex or DUP mode. Your radio might vary on what this mode's called, but that's generally what it's called. Now. When, you're, when you transmit, your radio will automatically transmit on the input, on the correct frequency that the repeater is listening to, and it will listen on the output. Now, if you hear a little squelch tail or maybe some Morse code or something like that, then you've hit the repeater and you're basically good to go. So this can extend your range massively, and you can. these repeaters are often community-owned or they are club-owned. Now, if you want to know if a repeater is nearby you, you could probably just try it and see if you can hit one on all of the channels. If you don't want to go through all of that, then you can just do a simple Google search. I just put in your general location and then put in CB repeater and see if you can find one. So if you've just picked up a radio for the first time or you're starting to get back into it, hopefully this guide is helpful for you. CB radio, once you know the basics, is reasonably easy to operate and it's very handy for those out in the bush or on the road or in a variety of different scenarios now if you want to know more about all of the changes that are coming in october 2025 to cb radio then you can view my video over here on all of the changes and also if you want to learn about amateur radio which expands the possibilities when it comes to radio communication then i've done a video on exactly what amateur radio is and how to get started